Welcome back to Wolfer Programming. Today we're going to be reviewing the new Raspberry Pi 5. I ordered it a couple weeks ago. It took forever to get here, but it's finally arrived and I'm happy to show it off. So with the case comes this fan. If you buy the other fan heatsink combo, you cannot use them together. I didn't know that. I thought that the case only came with a fan and not a heatsink. So I bought the more robust heatsink. Maybe it keeps a little cooler. I didn't really compare them. Honestly, if I had known that, I wouldn't have bought the other fan. I think this one is probably enough with the heatsink that it comes with. But, well, there you have it. The uh, Raspberry Pi stays nice and cool. It's pretty loud if you're watching YouTube videos. And it gets pretty hot when you touch it. Anyway, it does look cool, so I'm happy I bought it. Over here on the side, we have two micro HDMI ports. Would have been nice to have a USB-C port so I could just do USB-C to HDMI instead of having to order weird cables. But this is exactly how the Raspberry Pi 4 worked, so I don't really have any complaints there. No headphone jack, but all the USB headphone jacks seem to just work. This came with an old headset. I bought in college and it just works. The Linux kernel has a bunch of drivers and it has no problem picking things up. So if that's an issue, just pick up one of these. They're pretty cheap. And usually monitors have a headphone jack on it after you hook it up to the HDMI. It's not a big deal. It's not like a phone where you're carrying it with you and you need headphones because HDMI, anything that has an HDMI input typically has a 3.5 millimeter HD uh, audio output. So. Not too worried about it. You also have a special power adapter you need to get the full power. You can't use any USB-C adapter. You have to buy Raspberry Pis now because they have some weird tech inside of it. And I'm booting off of a NVMe drive here just for stability before a NVMe hack comes out. So yeah, that is the Raspberry Pi 5. Let's go ahead and boot up some games and see how it performs. And this is pretty early on, by the way. Performance will only get better. Mario 64 PC port running at 1080p. Runs no problem. Here we have Ocarina of Time PC port. Runs mostly pretty good. This game came running at 20 frames per second on the N64, and this will run that fine at 1080p. You can, for my testing, you could generally put it up to 30 frames per second at 1080p fine. On the load menu, it kind of messes up a little bit, but in game, 30 FPS is fine. Here we have Tux Cart. You know, pretty much any potato can run this game, but I included it for fun. Something you can have the kids play while they're using their new Raspberry Pi. So I found out you can also compile Doom 3. I went and bought Doom 3 on Steam and then compiled the open source version of Doom 3 and ran it. It seems like in windowed mode you can generally get it to run around 30 frames per second, although I think it ran at 60 frames per second originally. So you see here I'm bouncing up, yeah, the loading, it just pretty much dies. In game, about 30, I wouldn't call it playable. I think we really need a Vulcan renderer 
to get this game to run. And I, it looks like there is no Vulcan that ships with the Raspberry Pi 5 as of yet. I saw a blog post, they're ready to merge it into the kernel, but it's not on this kernel version. If someone knows better or how to install the Vulcan drivers on the Raspberry Pi, please let me know in the comments. And I would love to test different games out. Even certain emulators like the uh, Wii emulator, they run too slow with OpenGL. But if we had Vulcan, I think we could probably get full speed. At full screen, it's even worse. So I would not call this game playable yet. But it does run, which is awesome. The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind runs perfect. Full screen, you can use a Xbox controller, you can use a mouse and keyboard. Runs way better than the original Xbox version. And this, like the other games, is natively compiled for the PI. I compiled it this morning. Okay, so Cody and 4K video. We need to spend a, a minute talking about this <clears throat> because the Raspberry Pi 5 decided to do away with the H.264 encoder and decoder. Personally, I'm less worried about the encoder, but some people who were doing some robotics projects are worried about the encoding of H.264 video. There are no encoders in hardware now. It has to be done at the processor level, which they say can be done generally just as good with a single core. Now for decode, the only option is H.265. And here in Kodi, we have to enable that with something called DRM Prime, which I'm going to go into the menu in a second here and show you. But this is going to cause increased power draw. So for certain situations where power is needed to be conserved, honestly, the Raspberry Pi 5 is going to be worse than the Raspberry Pi 4. Because the CPU is better, it's going to... Um, it's going to be better for some weird formats that the hardware decoder didn't work, like anime. So if you go into the Kodi forums, the Libri-Elect guys are talking about, well, this works great with the new anime formats. But, um, but you know, in my opinion, H.264 is still the ubiquitous format on the internet. And we did away with H.264 decoding and we didn't really get anything in return. So the future format for video seems to be AV1, which is a royalty-free video format that's basically operated, run, created by big tech to kind of reduce licensing fees. 
Um, H.265 has very complicated licensing fees. Um, anyway, that's not present in this Raspberry Pi iteration, and I assume future iterations it will be present. And so this is really in this res, you know, going from a four to five because we're losing H.264 hardware decoding and e encoding. You know that that's a it may not be the best upgrade for everybody, even though we're four years apart. Now technically. Video playback is better in all forms on the Raspberry Pi 5, but we're decoding, ras we're decoding H.264 purely in software. So it does use more power. Um, the H.264 decoder maybe did not work that great in web browsers to begin with. You know, it took years for it to even get into Chromium. But that's something to, you know, that is something to consider if you're looking to buy a Raspberry Pi 5 when there are other devices that have those built in. I can think of, well, recent all winner devices have basically all of those video formats working at the hardware level. And the Orange Pi 5 has AV1, H.264, H.265, that's HVEC, um, all hardware decoded for a similar price point, of course, you're going to get less software support. You don't get the Raspberry Pi name, and that means a lot actually, because Raspberry Pi always have always has recent kernels. But something to consider, because if you really want video decoding, Raspberry Pi Five is not the best device for that. But it does a lot of things really good, and we know we're going to get, be supported in our Raspberry Pi 5s for a long time. It's only going to get better. My Raspberry Pi 4 works better now than the day I bought it, and that's really important, I think. Okay, last thing we have here, I have a screen, a portable monitor from Amazon. I got for $75. I got a portable keyboard here. It's battery powered. And we're looking at some YouTube videos. This is Big Bugs Bunny running at 1080p, 60 frames per second, and the Raspberry Pi 5 is able to keep up all in software decode. This is H.264 video. If you look at um, stats for nerds, you can double check that yourself. So streaming stuff from the internet at 1080p on the 1080p monitor works pretty good. I installed an Ubuntu image and tried running a display at 4K and then playing a 1080p stream and it wouldn't work. I had to drop down to 2K. I haven't tried that in Raspbian yet. Does Raspbian work in 4K with 1080p videos? Let me know in the comments below. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this is a configuration that you could work. You could take this to Starbucks. Everyone else is pulling out their MacBook Pros. All the hipsters are gonna raise an eyebrow while you pull out your Raspberry Pi, <laughs> your keyboard, your portable monitor, and your billion dollars billion dongles but it works and uh, it's pretty cool so what do you guys think um this is still early days for the raspberry pi 5 with updates and vulcan drivers we're going to get a lot uh, of improvements going forward this is already going to be a great server if you want to do some at-home hosting for the price yeah you could get something cheaper used but for new hardware it's not too bad if you wanted to host a website, if you wanted to use it for an NFS share, we have a big performance boost over the PI4, and it's only going to find better uses in the future. So let me know what you think of the comments. Are you going to upgrade from the 4 to the 5? Have you already bought the PI5? And that's it. Have a great day.